Now we're going to talk about the most common procedures in the dental office. We're going to start with oral exams. Oral exams can be divided into three categories. The first one is a periodic or recall or recare exam, and that is the exam that is done on the patient when they come in for their cleaning every 6 to 12 months. The limited exam is problem focused. So when a patient comes in with a toothache, the doctor looks at the area that the patient is complaining about. The comprehensive exam is on a new patient, and that usually takes a little bit longer because the doctor is charting all existing restorations and conditions in the mouth. The next category is the x-rays, photos, or radiographs. X-rays and radiographs are actually the same thing. We start with a full mouth set of necessary x-rays and the full mouth consists of 18 x-rays normally taken every three to five years and also taken on the new patient. The Paterex x-ray is the x-ray that is used for oral surgery or for implants and this is the x-ray where the patient either sits or stands in the machine and the x-ray head rotates around their face. Bite wings are illustrated in the picture on this slide and the bite wings are where the patient bites on a tab and both the upper and the lower of the posterior teeth are shown. Normally we take two to four bite wings every six to twelve months. A periapical x-ray is an x-ray that takes a picture of one to three teeth and this is an x-ray that will show both the clinical crown and the root of the tooth as well as the bottom of the tooth which is called the apex and this is for diagnostic purposes. Intraoral photos are actual photos that are of the teeth that magnify the cracks, the crevices, and abnormalities of the tooth structure. This is an illustration of a Panorex x-ray and as you can see it shows the relationship of the teeth in the jawbone. It shows the roots and it shows some baby teeth that are getting ready to be lost and it shows some permanent teeth that are forming in the jaw. Preventive procedures. We start with a prophylaxis adult and a prophylaxis child otherwise known as cleanings. The prophylaxis on a child is up to age 14 and once they reach 14 it is now considered an adult prophylaxis. Fluoride and fluoride varnish. Fluoride is usually done every 6 to 12 months along with the prophylaxis and the fluoride treatment is on children up to age 14. Fluoride varnish can be used on patients with high risk conditions such as diabetes, cancer, chemotherapy, or high blood pressure, or pregnancy. Scaling and root planing, otherwise known as deep cleaning. This is when the hygienist divides the mouth into quarters or quadrants and gives anesthetic in each quadrant and does a deep cleaning of the actual root structure of the teeth. The post-operative cleaning after a scaling and root planing procedure is periodontal maintenance and this is every three to four months. A full mouth debridement is when a patient comes in and they have not seen a dentist for a long time, anywhere from five to ten years. At that point, the patient has a full buildup of calculus, plaque, or tartar, and the doctor must do a cleaning in order to do a full examination. Sealants. Sealants are the mechanical sealing of the tooth structure, and the biting surface, or the occlusal surface, in order to prevent decay. The substance that is used for this sealing of the crevices is a uh, resin or plastic and it looks like a contact lens. It is also usually performed on permanent molars. 
Restorative procedures are otherwise known as fillings and inlays and onlays. And the fillings can be in white, which is composite, or silver, which is amalgam. And the inlays and onlays can be done in porcelain or in gold. There are other procedures too. Fixed prosthetics are considered or commonly known as crowns, bridges, or veneers. And they are replacing missing or broken teeth. This is a picture of a crown and it is covering the entire tooth. This is also a picture of the crown, how the doctor prepares for the crown. He grinds the tooth down into a thimble and then he places the crown, which is the full covering, over that thimble. Veneers are routinely used to fix discolored teeth, worn down teeth, chipped or broken teeth, teeth that have gaps in between them and teeth that are misaligned or crooked. Here is a picture of a patient before she had veneers and she had chipped teeth and then the veneer was placed and the veneer is a thin porcelain facing that goes over the front of the tooth all the way and then this right here is the finished result. She has six veneers that were placed. A bridge is an appliance which is permanently cemented into place to replace one or two missing teeth. The false tooth on the bridge is called a pontic, while the two teeth on either side of the pontic that are used to anchor it are called the abutment teeth. Here is a picture of a bridge, and this is a three unit bridge. All three pieces are soldered together. The pontic is the false tooth in the middle, while the two teeth on the other side, on either side, are the abutment teeth. This over here is considered a four unit bridge where it is replacing two missing teeth and then two abutments a unit being a tooth. The next is an implant. An implant is a screw which goes into the bone to replace one or two missing teeth. And here's what the implant looks like on an x-ray. Here is the implant top of, as it is sticking out of the gum. And then this is the end result, a full crown restoration that goes over the implant so that it looks like a natural tooth. Here is what the implant looks like outside of the mouth. And then, again, the final restoration is a crown. Removable prosthetics. Removable prosthetics are replacing missing teeth with an appliance that can be removed or placed by the patient. When all the teeth are missing in an arch, the doctor will place a denture. And that's all teeth. That is a full upper and lower set of dentures. When there are only some teeth missing in the arch, the doctor will place what is called a partial denture. So we have some natural teeth in this patient's arch, and then we have some missing teeth. And this is called a partial denture. There are some other common procedures that we have in a dental office. We have the occlusal guard, or the sports guard, or the night guard. And the occlusal guard is usually used on patients who grind their teeth at night or even during the day. We also use this uh, as a sports guard to protect athletes from any mouth injuries. Extractions. Extractions are actually the final result when it comes to dentistry. Our doctors are under the philosophy that we want to maintain all natural teeth as much as possible. If an extraction is necessary, please make sure to have the tooth replaced either by an implant or a bridge. Here is a root canal. Once again, we have the anterior teeth, which have one canal. The bicuspids have two canals, and the molars have three canals. The dental office usually charges accordingly with a tooth that has one canal being less expensive 
while a molar root canal is more expensive. In this picture, we have a tooth with an abscess at the apex or the bottom of the root. The doctor then takes the nerve out and then replaces the nerve with some medicine. And then the final result will be a crown for the final restoration. We also have orthodontic procedures, the braces to correct any malocclusions of the teeth. Once again, once you are working in a dental practice, please make sure to ask what are the top 10 most common procedures for that office.